What does it mean to create, to make something? Today, the tools and the materials available to make things are increasingly complex and open up new possibilities. But not every child has the opportunity to learn how to use new tools, to tinker, to practice science and engineering. An access gap is growing. For all children to be ready for work in the 21st century economy, they need opportunities to think creatively and use new tools, materials, and ways of thinking. Boston Children's Museum wants to address this growing gap. Science and engineering have been consistent themes for Boston Children's Museum since its founding by science teachers 100 years ago. A major destination for children and their parents, the museum welcomed over half a million visitors in 2013, including 23,000 children visiting as part of a school, camp, or community group. The thread that runs through the museum's many initiatives, exhibits, and programs is the belief in the transformative power of informal learning and play, propelled by inquiry, exploration, and hands-on doing. It is in this context, and with the financial support from the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center, that the museum recently undertook a study to assess the potential for expanding its offerings to reach older children with more science-based maker workshops. The results were dramatic. The Maker Shop project yielded an unexpected and enlightening discoveries that have led us to see visitors of every age, children and adults, as having the potential to be engaged science and engineering learners. All that is needed is intentionally designed STEM programs. For a year, the museum pilot tested 14 STEM-focused maker workshops aimed at children six and older. The workshops emphasized tool use, manipulation of materials, and problem solving, with the aim of children making an original creation. The workshops reached over 400 children and 300 adults. Families from all over Boston participated. These workshops introduced children to common tools like scissors, rulers, and pliers to more novel tools like rotary cutters, wire strippers, macro lenses, and to digital software like Lightroom, Adobe Premiere, and GarageBand, all in the interest of encouraging children to be creative, to explore, and to make. Workshops included cardboard constructions, macro photography, bug shop, air hockey engineering, skeet ball engineering, music studio, stamp making, and more. In the Cardboard Constructions Workshop, children and their adult caregivers imagined what they could make using only recycled cardboard, tape, and a variety of cutting tools. The Museum Arts Educator provided a tutorial on the use of the provided tools, as well as on cardboard joining, cutting, and scoring techniques. The results were spectacular. One example, this group of three boys, brothers, worked for two hours creating the airplane that they're holding. When the workshop was over, their mother was astonished, saying, you know, I can't get these boys to agree on something for 10 minutes. You had them working together on one project for two hours. In the bug shop workshop, kids studied insect anatomy, invented their own new species, and then wired their species to light up and even to move around the table. As with most of the museum's maker workshops, sometimes kids' enthusiasm outpaced their parents' ability to keep up. The family in this photograph, that's the little girl who's still making her bug, was very focused for the hour and a half that she was working, but her mother and grandmother needed a break. In the macro photography workshop, children used high-end digital photography equipment to compose images, take photographs, and send those images home. Staff then engaged children in conversations about composition, lighting, aperture, exposure, focus, depth of field, and staging as together the visitors and staff develop the best possible photograph. Children experimented with different ways to enhance the view of the objects and to create as many photographs as necessary until they were satisfied with the results. The results were just stunning. Children created beautiful close-up photographs of natural objects and then emailed the images home for posterity. In the music studio workshop, kids played with several different instruments, composed original songs, recorded them, and then send them home to themselves. For most, this was the first time they had ever touched the keys on a piano, held a guitar, or played a percussion instrument. In the Glowing Jellyfish Workshop, 
Families worked with novel tools and materials, such as conductive thread, LED bulbs and batteries, and common tools like needles, scissors and pliers, all for the purpose of creating and constructing their own new species of bioluminescent jellyfish. Children learned to work from a schematic to create and use a 2D pattern, to hand sew the materials together, and to work with conductive thread to complete a circuit. Museum educators tested a number of other workshops as well and saw the same levels of interest and enthusiasm. Extensive workshop evaluation was critical to informing subsequent practices and identifying improvements. From the 14 unique workshops offered, involving 700 total participants, the museum collected survey data from a total of 231 parents and children. 78% of the participating children were within the target age range of 6 to 10 years old. A few participants were younger than 6 and several were older than the target age range. Results showed that both children and adults enjoyed the workshop so much that most of them said they would return for similar programming. Of 227 visitors responding, 91% responded that the workshop was so enjoyable I would do it again. Furthermore, the vast majority of visitors stated that these workshops offered new and novel experiences. In a second round of evaluation, 129 visitors were asked, Did you learn anything new in this workshop? Or did you try anything you've never tried before? 94% answered yes. So the workshops clearly hit the bullseye with participants. The evaluation also showed that the skills inherent to making require someone to model these skills and the use of common tools. Particularly eye-opening was the lack of experience kids and parents had using even the most rudimentary tools. Most of the participants were using these tools for the very first time. So, maker shops that address children six and older need to be instructor-supported. The pilot has led the museum to frame STEM learning as a continuum from younger to older children and from basic to more advanced tools, with the potential to make a meaningful and long-term impact on the entire informal science field. For decades, Boston Children's Museum has pioneered playful STEM skill development through its exhibits, programs, curriculum, and teacher training. However, the age of children visiting has declined, with far fewer kids over six coming to the museum. This is unfortunate, as it further limits opportunities to practice hands-on science. What this Maker Shop project has demonstrated is the potential to leverage the inherent appeal of making and doing STEM activities with children six and older, so that their interest in science does not dissipate and science learning improves. All of us are always developing as problem solvers, as creative thinkers, as collaborators. What changes as we mature is the sophistication with which we employ these skills. The museum's goal is to help children move along these various continuums of tools, challenges, and skills so that everyone, including adults, can grow as accomplished makers and scientists. How can we take this pilot and scale it? And what is the opportunity at hand? Sometimes referred to as behaviors or habits of mind, skills such as observing, experimenting, collaborating, and communicating are needed to make investigation of a problem more efficient and thereby more rewarding. They are the skills that, given the opportunity, children can discover and access inside themselves whenever they endeavor to make something. Recent studies show that the top indicator of future interest in science for children is not aptitude, it's not how they score on tests or the grades they get in school, or even how much science content they know. It's whether they like science or not, if it engages them. A child who is engaged in science, who likes science, is much more likely to stay interested in science. Through the Massachusetts Life Sciences Maker Shop Project, the museum identified an opportunity it is particularly well-suited to address. Introducing and sustaining children's interest in the joy of science discovery. This kind of programming with families is the new hands-on, and this focus on a continuum of skill development among visitors of every age is the next step. Creating a multi-age innovation lab, the most compelling maker space in the country.